Hello, 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 hello. Wherever you are located on this vivacious world called Earth, wherever you are located, I hope you are having a vibrant day, evening, or night, wherever you're located. Welcome aboard to my channel and Blender. Today, I'm going to be talking about the non-linear editor. If I'm, since I'm talking about the non-linear uh, editor, that means, like me, dear people, you are about to embark into the world of computer animation. No longer are you and myself Blender 3D Artist Basics. If you are learning about the non-linear editor, or the dope sheet, or the graph editor, but especially with the non-linear non-linear editor, you are entering the world of 3D animation, which I'm about to bark on. So the first thing I want to do is go up here to the phenomenal animation tab, click. We're in animation. Next, this is what I want to do. I want to go into uh right here, right here where I have it. Um. Okay, where's that? Um. The tools. I hit two. I'm gonna go into annotate. I'm coming right here. Oh, I forgot. I only can annotate inside of the uh, the report. Well, anyway, just follow my mouse. I'm coming right here to the editor type. I want to choose a uh, dope sheet. But like I said, I'm not just going to be using just the dope sheet. I'm going to use a subset of the dope sheet. So where the title at, where my mouse is located, where it says dope sheet, I want to click on the editor that's called Action Editor. Zoom. Bam. Now I want to come down to this editor type right at my bottom where my mouse is circling it. I want to click on my editor type. Now I want to go over non-linear editor. Bam. Now, I have a math background, so I'm going to tell you about this non-linear, oh, non-linear editor. I wonder, can I write down in here? Nope, I can't. I have to write in my report. So, first of all, I'm going to select all my items, hide them. Let me explain what the non-linear editor is. If you have anything about math, a straight line, such as this. I'll call it L. Line L is linear because look at it. I, I can go from point A, point A to point B in a straight forward fashion. I'm just going straight or in a line. That's why it's called linear. Now, with non-linear, I put it right here, non-linear. It will not be in a straight line. You will see in the non-linear editor, I can have a line right here. I'll call it line M. Or I can have a line at the bottom. I'll call it line K. And I can have another line right at the bottom. I'll call it X. Now, even though it's three lines, as a system, if I was graphing this on a graph, it's not a line because if I make the so-called vertical line test, like here, it's hitting it at those two points. I call it point A and point B. So that's why it's not nonlinear. But you can make it nonlinear. For instance, I can have all my point. I can have it like this. I can have it a lot. I can have one of my strips here. 
I can have another strip here. And I can have another strip right here. Then it will be linear. But technically, it may not be linear because each of these is a separate strip. You get me? So, all right. So that's our little math education. But why is not called? Uh, why is called nonlinear? All right. So I'm done with this. I hit N. I get. I go back to tools. I delete this. Zap, and I'm done. I'm done with tools. I'm done with N. Now oh, I better hit T so I can pick up off my um select box. Now we can come back and start using the world of Blender. I'm gonna hit Alt H. Oh, I have to move my mouse in the, in the report. Alt H and it's back. Okay, so let's start. I have my action editor right here where my mouse is located. And at the bottom, I wish they would have given it a name like the action editor. This should be my non-linear editor. I'm gonna click on this editor type just to make sure. It would have been good for them to give it a name. Maybe I should learn Python programming, but hey. So we will begin. I have three objects here. A decoration, a table, a simple chair. Let me start working on them. And we're going to see what's going to be happening in this uh, non-linear editor. Now, so I don't have to keep hitting this I key over and over. I hate hitting I and selecting these uh, keyframe inferences. So I like to go over here where my mouse is at, where it's called keying. I go up here to active key and set. And I'm going to choose location, 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 rotation, and scale. That way, when I hit I, I don't have to keep going down that little menu over and over. That's a quick tip for you right there. Go into uh, key in and selecting which of those um, items you want without hitting uh, I, then location, location a thousand times. So let's start now. I'm going to work with my chair first. So over here, my action editor, I want to click on the word new. This is, this is the important part. As soon as I clicked on new, you see it's a, a relationship between an action editor and a non-linear editor. They work hand in hand. The non-linear editor, it does not work. It don't do nothing on its own. The non-linear editor is dependent on that action editor. I'm going to say it again. I'm an educator, so I have to say things a couple times so the students can understand me. The non-linear the editor by itself is worthless. The non-linear editor, from what I know right now, I've only been doing it for about, about three days, needs the action editor. You saw when I click new in the action editor, boom, it opened up this uh, orange strip. This orange strip represents my timeline. That's all it's for. Now, unlike the timeline, the dope sheet, when the points are on here, I can't move them. So I, I want to give my action a name. I want to call it chair. It's called chair. Now with my chair, I want to hit my my eye, my keyframe there. As you see right here at the number one, you may see my keyframe. Definitely appear in this. Um, it's really called the dope sheet, but the subset is an action editor. The dope sheet has given me my two dots for my chair. You got the location, location, scale, and all that there. You remember, because I checked those three when I was doing keying. I want to take my chair. I want to grab it on X and move it back some. And my uh, little editor right here, I'm going to click on 60. Oops, I have to move it back. G, X, move it back. I hit the I key without having to choose all the little sub menus. All right, I'm gonna I'm I'm click on 120 in that range. I'm gonna take my chair and scale it down to my very tiny proportions. So I hit I again. 
I'm going to take this, move it to in a 180 range. I'm going to take my chair, grab it. I want to move it on the Y. I hit G and Y. Now remember, if you're here, I'm, if you work on this nonlinear editor, you know a lot about Blender. I don't have to show you what keys I'm hitting. I just can tell you. I'll move it here. Now I want to scale it again. Then I went ahead. Uh, then last, I'm going to go to my uh, 240 range. I want to hit G, Y, bring it over, and make it a little bit large, and scale it to make it larger. Then I hit I. All right, good. So I'm done with the chair. Now, when I click on my green plant here, I have to give it a new instance. So I hit new, create new, hit new. I'm going to call it plant. And right beneath, see, done. That's one good thing about the, um, the non-linear editor. Let me move it up some. Unlike the dope sheet, the timeline, the non-linear editor, I conveniently see my two timelines. Since it's uh, darker orange, I'm working with the one card chair. And this is what I like about the um, the um, the NL NLA editor. When you use the dope sheet, the timeline, the graphic, you don't see no name. If you see over here, where my mouse located in blue, it gives you my name. I'm working with the chair timeline now. Beneath it, I have the one called uh, my plant. The plant one is on that um, orange timeline. So I like that already. Hmm. All right, so I got my plant. I'm gonna go back. I wanna move my um, move it back to zero. I hit R. Now I just wanna scale it down. Oh, I hit R. Now I wanna move it to in that 60 range. I'ma scale it down, make it tiny. And then when I make it tiny, I wanna move it down onto my floor. G, C is on my floor. Yep, it's on my floor now. So now I can hit I. I want to move to 120. I want to take my little green plant. I want to move it on the X. I moved it on G, X. It's on X. No size change. I hit I again. I want to move it to 180 range. I'm going to bring my plant back. G, X. I move right here in the center. I hit a, I I want to, well, I want to scale it up a little bit. Scale up. G, Z. So it's on the ground. Then I want to hit I. And you see as we move along on that uh, orange timeline for my plant is moving along with me. So it's letting you know do I have a keyframe there or not? I want to move my keyframe up here to the 240 range. I want to take my little plant move it back G X then I want to scale it to make it larger. Then I'm going to hit G Z to put it on my little floor then I want to hit I. Okay. Now, my last one. I'm going to put it back to zero. My last one is this table. <laughs> Let's see if it give me the table. It's going to be, so I have to move it up. So I want to hit new again in my action editor. Right there. I'm going to give it a take. Now, you see right here, it has the word action. On my little, uh, in the nonlinear editor, it's called action. Let's see what happens when I give it the name table. I hit enter. And you see, 
action up here in the action editor and then my long and then my nonlinear editor is called table see remember to work with the nonlinear edit that to work with the nonlinear editor you first must work within the uh action editor I didn't even see realistically I didn't have to show my nonlinear editor but I just wanted to show you all but see so you all can see the relationship between a nonlinear editor and the action editor nonlinear editor dependent on that action editor and since I'm working on my table I have to give it my first frame so it's on the table now I just want to move my table on the wall. I want to keep it on the floor. So I just want to move over to the wall. That's the little bit. GY. That's the little. And then I just want to rotate it. I want to rotate it on the X. Rotate it on the Y. I like that better. So I rotated it on the Y. Whoops, but I want to do something else first. I'm going to hit Control Z. I want to have to move it to 60, not 60 range. Now I can move it, G, Y on the Y. I want to rotate it on the Y. Then I hit I. I want to move to my 120 range. And you see, as I'm moving along, it gets a darker or a lighter orange. Move it to the 120 range. I want to take my table first. I want to make it small, a lot smaller. All right, that's good. Then I want to move it more on my Y. Then I want to rotate it on the Y a little bit, make it look, make it look better. I rotate it on the Y. Then I hit I. All right, I'm moving to the 180 range. I want to take my table again. G, Y, move it on Y, move it all the way over, rotate it on the Y again, like that, I want to make it smaller, like that, then I want to hit my I key, then I'm going to move it back to the 140, 240 range, alright, now, I want to rotate it on the Y again. I want to scale it on the Y. Then I want to grab it on the Y and just put it right here in the center. Then I hit I. Now we done. Let's see how our animation look. I'm going to play it a couple times. All right, good. Cool. So that that's nice. Good. I started again. Now, to begin working with my data, I'm going to move this all to my action. I'm to my nonlinear editor. To do that, now it's, it's a number of ways to get the information into the nonlinear editor. See, right now, while it's a uh, while it's colored orange, it won't do much. I'm going to click on these check boxes right here and see if that has any effect. It probably won't. Check, click on my check box for my chair. Check box for my decoration. And a check box for my uh, table. See? It don't do nothing. I'm going to tell you when it will have an effect on the animation. So there's no effect on the animation. I'll let you know when. Because the actual information is not there. The, the orange bar is just showing me keyframe information. The non-linear editor is not doing a thing right now. It's just basically a, record, a passive recorder. Now I'm going to come up here to the word push. I hit push. Well, I want to hit control Z. I don't want to push nothing yet. I want to go in order. I make my chair first. That's what I want to do. I make my chair first. So I'm going to hit push. But apparently nothing happened. 
but we have to go and see because my window is only so big. See, it pushed the information to the chair underneath the table heading and it's there. So that's what happened when you push it. It pushed every, it's, well, you're going to see what happened. I'm going to go again to my, I click up here. I want to click on my plant. I want to push it. And you see the plant now is in that table section, but it, it just happened to be on top. Last, let's click on table. Push it down there again. Okay, now, the, oh, I forgot the table was already there. So, now, now since I got to get rid of the table, I'm going to show you how to delete it. You click on edit. You look for the word, you know, delete. Delete strip. Because that's what it is. If you know anything about Blender's uh, video sequen sequencer like I do, Blender's video sequence sequence editor. What is that? I mean, video sequencer editor. If you know anything about it, it looks similar to to uh, the nonlinear editor. Cause look, right there. But it does it. It does yellow. It's a strip. When we went to edit, I went to edit delete. It's called a strip. Each of these is a strip. The plan is a strip. The chair is a strip, and the table is a strip. If you want to do more with this strip, you have to hit the end key. I should go up some more so to make it. I want to let me go up some more. I can make my scene a little bit smaller, so we can see more. Make the scene smaller. Move them up. Okay. You hit end. You got two options: animations. And modifiers. Right now, I'm just worrying about the animation. You got you can do many effects with this. I want to do that. Right here, my end frame. One, two fifty. Evaluation. But I want to do something to my. I want to because you can't control the size of your track. There's two ways of doing it though. But I'm just showing you this right here. Active strip, action clip. Let me see if I make it 10. Yeah, see, it changed now. The information is still there, but you see, it, it, it may be super fast now. Let me see if it affect the animation any. See, no, it hasn't taken no effect on the animation. The only thing it is, it's combining my, my plant and the table. All right, so I'm going to put it back to 250. That's how you control the dimensions of your particular strip. Or you can take your strip right here and you can hit S. I thought S would do it, but it don't. But, it, well, but you just hit N and you can change, you know, how long you want, your, how long you want this particular strip to last. All right, so we got that out the way. Now, it's another thing I learned in my investigation over the last several days. Now, I want to run my animation again. I have my animation running. Now, if I, I'm going to click, and it's under the table section. I'm going to click on each of these boxes, and we're going to see what happened. And if you want to, I want to get rid of this one because I, I had three. One, two, three. But these are called tracks over here. I have one, two, three, four. I want to get rid of the action, the extra tracks. So you go to edit, delete track, and you see it's gone. So now that I have three tracks. And you can call the tracks whatever you want. I could call it track plant, track chair, and action stash. Now, let me click on these apps and see what happened. Now, see, it say table section. Here's my table track. But you see the table is not being animated anymore. Now it's animated.
but I clicked on the table track and it stopped. But and I, now you saw I clicked on the plant track it disabled, the chairs tr track is disabled, and the last one is the table track. When I click on the table, it will stop moving. I'm gonna tell you why. I learned this in the last couple of days. To have movement effects on each of you know, like your, your animation items, they must be in a, in, a, in a blue section. Like, for instance, table is in a table section. De decorations, you don't see the yellow strip in a, a decoration section. To make it stop, it must be there. To make that chair stop moving, like the table has stopped, it must be in that chair animation section. So I want to come down. And delete each of these. I wanted uh, the table. I can't delete my table. So I'll have to go up here to edit. Delete tracks. And it's gone. I'm going to go back up here. To click on this one. And you have to click on it. You see it look white. I, I, I don't know how I look in this that I'm in this uh, video I'm making but when you click on everything it turns a bright white color or a highlighted white like I click on decoration look a little more bright I click on chair it's right I'm gonna click on these tracks to delete all the tracks edit delete tracks edit delete tracks Okay, now here comes the moment of truth that I want to do. I want to. Now for this, I can push the information from the chair right into the chair. So I'm going to click on this button with the button card. You see the button? It has two track. It has a it has a, uh, a a white triangle and there's two little tracks beneath it. I'm going to click on that. And you see the chair has been pushed in the chair stack. Now, if I if I unselect my chair, you see I have control over it. It has stopped moving. I'm gonna come down here to my decoration stack where it says plant. I wanna push it. So I'll push my plant. If I want to stop it. I click on this white box for decoration and now it has stopped moving. That's the way you control each of your animations separately. That's how you do it. And I sort of like it this way to have uh, everything in this individual in this particular area so I can manipulate it more. I want to come down here to uh table. I clicked on table. I don't see that push down information. So I have to click on the word add. Then I'm gonna add action strip. Now I want to click on table. Now for some reason it like it like to add a, it like to make duplicates of everything. So I come here to this section, hit X. I come to this other table where it's duplicated at and hit X. And it's there. I'm going to stop this. And I think, oh, so, oh, since I had my animation running, it put the table where the cur you know, where that, where that, where that um, blue cursor moving at. So that's why I threw the, that's why I threw the animate, that's why I threw the table strip all the way over here. I just want to move it till I get back to zero. Let me see. Till I get back to zero. Now I want to give you all some other information. So I'm going to click on my, I got my table here. And that's it. So it's a lot of work with this editor. You see I got two tracks. It's a lot. Of, now remember, that's why I'm going slow. It's a lot of work you want to, you have to do with this. It's not super easy. Delete the extra track. Okay, so I got my plant, my table in this particular area. And I got the chair right here. And you see my chair, I got the, the two, these two tracks again. I want to click on this one, edit, delete tracks. So everything looks nice and consistent and nice and orderly. 
Let's see what happens if I play my animations now. The only one that's moving, yeah, it's the table because I had the little, the little checkbox. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to check my decorations. Okay, it's moving now. Then I'm going to click on chair and it's moving. So if you want to have fine tune control over each of your strip, you must put it in its particular category. All right, so we can stop and move on. And I'll show you some other benefits about this uh, nonlinear editor. Now, the reason all of them moving like the way they are, see, this is how much is beautiful than a timeline, than a uh, dope sheet, whatever. You see, each of these represent my timeline, like I said earlier. This yellow one for chair, this yellow one for plant, and this yellow one for table. The reason they moving like they are, because remember, I always thought all of them was on that same dope sheet information when I did it earlier. But you can take things and move it around and make it more nonlinear. So, for instance, let me zoom out some more. I'm going to try to make it some. Ugh. The only thing I can do is make it smaller vertically. Great. All right, but anyway. I'm going to put it back to my timeline back to zero. Oh, you see everything is at one. The chair is at one. The plant at one. And this uh, table at one. Here's the beauty of the non-linear editor for animation. I can click on my chair, my plant. I can move it to 60. Then hopefully it should start the animation at 60. I'm going to click on my table. And then hopefully, it should start its animation at wherever I move it to. Let me see where I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it at 140. Now, I'm going to cross my fingers. I hope it worked the way I said it would work. Let me cross my fingers. Good. So, only the table moving. Now, the plant moving. And now, the chair. Wonderful. I'm going to do that a little bit more. I'm going to do something else. Put it back to zero. I'm going to move my planter to the 100 marker. I'm going to take my table and move it at uh, 180. Also, I could scale it too. But if you want to scale it, remember you hit N. You go right here to where? Where is it? One of these labels. Which one? Not this. Not that. You go to strip extensions right here. That's how you can adjust the width of your strip. Let me let me check and see. I'm gonna make it fifty. Let me see what it is. Is that oh oh? It started at it started at frame five. Then I'm gonna end at frame one hundred. You see? I can adjust the size of it. But I'm just going to put it back the way I had it originally. All right, so that's good. I'm going to hit N again. And I said I want to move this to 200. It's done. Let's start the animation again. But So you see how powerful it is. The thing I like about the non-linear editor, it don't got them little dots. You know what I'm talking about, the dots in the dope sheet. It don't look as confusing as the graph editor. All you just move it is the, is the, um, these yellow strips, whatever color you have your blender on, because I have it on the default color mode. You just move this around, and you know this is the, the, um, the time for my chair. I know this is the time for my plant. I know this is the time for my table. That's the beauty of the nonlinear editor. But let me play it now and see how everything runs. Let's see my chair moving first. Then my plant started moving. Then finally my table. So that concludes my little brief introduction, of good people, to the benefits of the non-linear editor for animation. You could now. It's one more. I want to go over one more thing before I go. Then you see this gray bar and this gray bar. I click. 
I cannot move it. I cannot move it. like for for this one since I have it like this. I cannot move. I cannot move the chair where this blue line at. I can't. It won't let me enter other categories. So it's not as easy to move around as like the video sequencer editor. I'm gonna come down here to uh decorations. My plant. You see, I cannot move it I'll, for this version. I can I can only move it horizontal. I can't move it no more. For the table, it will not let me. I only can deal underneath the, the blue heading for table. I, for this, I can't move it vertically. But you can move it vertically. Like when I, the version that I first had. Let me see if I can go back to my first version. If I can. And how many times will the Z let me do this? Let me see. I'm going to keep hitting Z. If it let me do it. I'm going to go back to my, variable, my first one that I made earlier. Okay, it won't let me do it. Okay, but I know what to do. X, X, X. I just gonna hit push. I find my chair. Oh, and one more thing you need to do. You see these zeros right here? If I save this file, it will not be saved. So, to save it for actual saving, you have to click on where it say chair. You have to click on this shield. Click on this shield for it's called fake user. And has given a number fake. I come down here to plant. Give it a fake user. I come down here to table. Give it a fake user. You want to hit fake user so your information will be saved to the file that you save it to. Right, let me get back to what I was saying earlier. So I got my, I want to go back to my, what's first? Chair. I'm going to hit push. I want to go to plant, push. I want to go to table. Where's my table at? I don't see it on here. I'm going to hit table, push. Okay, there it is. Now, when they are in close proximity like this, you should be able to move it and place them right behind each other. I'm going to grab this. And move it up. You see, it, it went right up because there was directly on. There was in a stack. There was in a stack. I want to move it down so I can see my other one. I want to click on chair now. Grab it and move it right behind the plant. All right, let's start the the slide again. Now it's going. It should. It should. In theory, I got to cross my hands. It should do the table first. Oh, the reason it's probably not doing the table first because it's still in a section called decorations. So that's why it's going to make sure my decoration move first. And plus it'll probably be on the decoration stack too. So I said, you, you got to let your head get around this, how to manipulate this because it's not as easy as some of the other stuff in Blender. So I'm going to play it. So the plan has moved. My decoration is moving by itself. Oh. Oh, I know why. I'll give you a couple of seconds to tell me why the other one's not moving. Think. It's a simple answer. Why they're not moving. Okay. The reason they're not moving. Well, I, I guess I can, I can do this now. I hope I can. Hit in. I don't know. I'm going to hit the T and see if I can annotate down here. Nope, I cannot. I saw the annotate only work in this, um, the report. The reason it keeps stopping because, you see where my mouth at? My timeline is only stopping at 250. Now I have to extend it to at least 750. And let me see what will happen then. Uh, 50. Hit enter. Okay, so they encapsulate everything. Let's see what happened now. But remember, even though the table first, this is really the section for decoration. So the, the decoration will move. I guess I would have to put it in another category, but that's for another day. Like I said, I've only been dealing with this three days, trying to get my head around it for three days. 
All right, so let's start. So the t is it a table decoration section? So only the table going to move. Let's see if the planets start moving. Okay. So I got to figure that out. So like I said, it's not no simple stuff. Oh, let me see. And I got to check each of my sections. I had the table on. I have it on. So. So. But we saw. Anyway. Regardless, when I had it in it in its particular area, when I had everything in its unique area, decoration was under the blue tab. Table was under the blue tab. And chair was under the blue tab. Everything works smoothly. I'm, I'm sure I can figure this out later. Because I had it working earlier. But now, like so many things in life, it want to be stubborn with me. It wants to be stubborn. Is that track? I have this one. Let me see. Okay, so I'm going to end this, but I'm going to figure out more. But at least you all have a, a, a beginner's idea of how to use this in LA editor, the editor. And that's another thing we can do, too. I wonder if it can work. I may be able to like combine all my strips. Let me see. Edit. I can make a meta strip. Where that option at? Not, not, not make a single user. Like I said, I only been using it for 30 days. I mean, not a couple of days. But I may end it right here and work with it some more. But at least y'all got the basic idea of, because I never used a meta strip before, but I know, I know it does have a meta strip like the video sequ sequencer editor. Add meta strips. All right, so it's a meta strip. Okay, but it's still. Let me see what happened with this meta strip. It may. It's only working still with the meta strip. It is working with that. Um. So I'm gonna undo the meta strip. Okay, but if I gave you some information on how to use the NLA editor in its basic form, give me a thumbs up. If you got any comments to make about the NLA editor, you can tell me why, when I got them all together, why it's not working. I know it's in that, uh, the decoration section, but when I did it earlier, I had them all working. And I can't move them around anymore, can I? I can't move them to a different st section. See, I can move it down, but I only can do it in that particular area. Oh, I should move it to this other G control. Can I move it down? Let me see if it works if I move it down. Grab. Uh, wow. I'm going to grab this one. Grab Y. Okay, still not doing nothing. But anyway, I don't care. I'll figure it out later. Tell me what I did wrong. It's all about learning. If you want to subscribe for future content, please subscribe to the Next Time Bender family. I apologize for not figuring out why it's not working like it did, but I showed you all a lot already. Until the next time, peace.